Okay, welcome to the Cherry Red Record Stadium here at Plough Lane uh, for the fixture, the crucial fixture it feels like uh, in Sky Bet League One, the rearrangement of the rearrangement uh, between Wimbledon and Charlton Athletic. My name's Aaron Paul, buzzing to be here on what's a nice chilled mild night here uh, in South West London. Joining me for uh, the pre-match show, Tom Large, Hello. dressed very perfectly in Charlton Athletic colours. This evening, uh, how long have you been to Charlton for? Just about eighteen years. Eighteen years, mm. good, good, good to have you with us. And uh, of course, he lives in this stadium. George Jones is is with us again. How are you, bro? Not bad. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks. Good. Um, loads to talk about. We're going to have a couple of special guests with us as well. Spikes at the wheel this evening. He's shaking his head, so it means things aren't going well. But we'll have Team News you a full preview to what is a massive, massive game. Mark Bowen's first game. Uh, my first home game in charge at Plough Lane. Um, it, it's going to be big, guys. Big atmosphere needed. He's asked for it. Hopefully, he gets it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a sellout here at Plough Lane tonight. So it'll be, you know, we'll, me and Tom, we've been here, we've seen these games under the lights, the atmosphere we can get going. We need everyone behind the team tonight because tonight does feel like make or break. Yeah, no, um, I think this one is kind of your real yeah. before the, the ship sails towards relegation. I think if we can get a point or even three tonight, which I think we're capable of. Um, just gonna make me sound super, be super hopeful, but uh, no, I think we can get. I think we looked good when we were at them. Uh, we went to the away fixture uh, back in February, but yeah, I think uh, I'm positive for tonight. Right, should we head towards the highlights? I don't know, Spike. Are we ready for the highlights? We're not quite ready for the highlights. Should we give a build up to our, our guests that are going to be coming on? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one player played for Wimbledon Football Club and for AFC Wimbledon. Scored a load of goals as well around the early 2000s. Um, David Connolly joins yeah. us. He's he's in the building. From what I understand, somewhere, he was supposed to be here at five o'clock. It's half six and he's just arrived. <laughs> well done, David. Well done. Uh, Lyle Taylor, the man, the myth, the legend, is floating around just to my right as well. He'll be joining us after seven o'clock tonight. Um, guys, are we, are we looking at uh, another back five tonight? Uh, you know, the opportunity to, to sort of build on that performance from, from, from Sheffield Wednesday. Granted, it was a, it was a late defeat, but the opportunity again to, to build on these first few days of the Mark Bowen era? I think, yeah, back five, I think it, must, it works for us. Uh, we, we have defenders that can play in a back, five, a back three to centre-backs. Uh, and also we've got attacking full-backs and Paul Osu and Henry Lawrence who can do, do some damage of you know range of passing uh, and also quite a lot of pace to complement Asal, Rudoni uh, and whoever takes that striker role up front today. But yeah, no, I think we're looking yeah. forward to that. And, and that's the thing, I think the way we set up at Sheffield was very much that low block in midfield, trying not to give them any space, trying to make them force them to play through us. I'd be surprised if we don't do a similar thing tonight because it's a similar game of like, let's keep a clean sheet and then try and nick something at the other end because that's the thing, because if we go into this the way that we have done it and hope for a 1-0 win, 2-1 win, something like that, because we have to keep it tight. So I'd be amazed if it's not back five. Does anyone else feel that this game is kind of meant to be, it's being rearranged, what, twice now? Yeah, this is the third attempt. This is the third attempt. Maybe it was meant to be, maybe this game was supposed to be in this place. Power lane is warming up nicely, we've seen fans in and around the ground, there's a few of the, uh, the stuff, I don't know why I'm looking that way, but I just wanted to <laughs> have a look outside. Um, it'll be pretty cold out here, a bit wet, surface is looking... Mm, mm. <laughs> it's looking a hell of a lot better than it has done in yeah. the last sort of few weeks, and obviously, I mean, you would have seen that on the last home game we were at here, it looks like a carpet compared to where it did a month ago. Yeah, no, we had some real dry patches and the, yeah. the rugby lines as well, which were a, a huge topic <laughs> of discussion. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's the last Tuesday night game, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah. you know, Tuesday night games are the special ones, the ones that come yeah. after work or, or after school and enjoy playing under the lights. Of course, it's not, it's not the last game under the lights this season. The women's team likely to have one more midweek game as well. So. Smashing it as well, aren't they? Yeah, 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 women's team doing really well. We'll be speaking about them later on. But these under the light games are always something very special. Yeah, uh, let's head towards uh, some highlights. And first, we look back at the Cambridge game here at Plough Lane. Yeah. 
played so we started off so strongly and then we can see we started to create some chances and you know the disadvantage of playing the higher line as we've seen we'll get it through here it's a the worrying trend that we've seen a lot over the last month or so. Yeah, it doesn't that's me because obviously we've got Kevin Bay on the bench yeah. very good in the back three. Uh, so we've got that pace of line. Um, I think he's more suited to the back three than back and that's the thing, that when you're playing that back three, I mean, I always would say the Sheffield, when the Sheffield United team got in the wild, they utilised it so well with their wide four, wide centre back, so, <coughs> so important they're athletic and can be able to move up and down the pitch quickly. Just want to that I think, you know, there's, there's elements, I think, you know, you've got to be getting a full hand to that. Um, but also look at the, the defenders, obviously, this isn't there now, but. Yeah. Look how many players are just left unmarked. Yeah. But then the thing is, it's not even like there's a lack of bodies back there. We've got the bodies back there, but no one's picking their men up. They're just, it's almost like we've gone zonal when the ball's still in play. And that's, you know, even had he not taken a shot, there was a man free. You know, two, well, two players free inside the corner there, and that was always going to back up. But the thing is, even if, even if Tant had, you know, maybe got a hand and saved that shot, they probably would have had the first two or three players for a rebound. And that was the concern. Well, people can ask questions about it, but I do think it's quite harsh. He's been called on it. it a lot this season. And more often than not, he doesn't get saved. Or, you know, early in the season, I personally think he's been one of the better players. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's actually someone off of his own. Yeah, there you go. That was the story the last time out here at the Cherry Road Record Stadium. Uh, we moved to Saturday's game and Mark Bowen's first game in charge of the Wombles away at Sheffield Wednesday. And it was um, <laughs> it was it was it was a late late show from the hosts who have passed throughout. You know, they, they got a, a good lineup. The manager there, Dan was back heavily by, by the owner and how we expect to get. We to return back to the championship pretty quickly, um, but it, it was it was more the same really, conceding late goals and, and being punished. Yeah, but I mean obviously uh, that first goal to concede a poor referee just kind of you know caught the wrong side of the side. Position. That's that sla slight lapsing judgment. That's more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that's the sort of thing that you think in two years' time, in 50, 100 more games, Paul Ross is going to make a mistake. I'm not going to give Ive credit thing. for that. Bury the chance, bury the chance. Yeah. I'm but sure our guests will tell you, you've got to bury that chance yeah. and it's pulled back, it's on a plate. Yeah. And, and three homegrown players, three players involved in that move, all from our academy. And I think, you know, that says a lot about how important that's going to be for our future. Personally, I don't mind the ball out. It's a great step up from Rudy, but look at us out with so much space there. Yeah. Play a ball across. That should and, be a, yeah. a sprint and go. Yeah. Play the ball there, look. Yeah. Yeah. The but but that's well. just a confidence thing. He's played the safe pass, the one who he will know will come off, rather than playing that the glory pass it's that a, would go through. Well. Yeah, no, yeah. Especially because especially when you think the manner of his first goal, you think if he just does that again, he can get a bit of lift on it. It's, you know, 2 1, and we probably have to see, see out for three points, but then this happens. You saw that in the Cambridge highlights, he does that bit of a scorpion kick. 
Yeah, a solid finish uh, from Lee Gregory there. Uh, we are awaiting team news, what we should have it inside the next minute or so here at the Cherry Red Record Stadium for the uh, big, big London derby. I was at another one last night, I feel quite privileged to see two London derbies, well, I'm going to see two London derbies uh, in two days. Amory Godfrey will be joining us in a minute. Um, but yeah, awaiting team news here. As soon as Spike's got it, he's going uh, to distribute it to us. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll look at the changes that Mark Bowen, if he has indeed made any changes to his 11 tonight, uh, has made here. Spike oh. has team news. George, do you want to dish it out? Yeah, so it is a back... Yeah, it is a back three. So it's in goal. Back three of Nightingale, Hennigan and Shoker. Lawrence and Osu as wing-backs. Woodyard and Marsh in midfield with Rudoni and then Asal and Robinson up front. Unchanged. Unchanged. Um, and then Sud, Broom, Kalambai, Nessa, Chislet, Terry Abelaide, Dapa Mabude and Osuya. It's going to be a lot of attack on the bench there. I like yeah. that. Um, I think Very it gives us a change. lot of options up top. I'd like to see um, Osuya come on. I think he's I think he's looked positive. He's looked fast. Uh, he looks like he can kind of keep up with the likes of Asal and Rudoni and, and counter attack. So for me, I think. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, it's nice to see Marsh and Woody in midfield again. They're uh, two very strong players who, who are quite suited to each other, I think. And, uh, and that's, I think that when you're doing that low block, which it's obvious we're going to set up in the same way, it will be another low block of just trying to keep it tight. You need Woody and Marsh, because I mean, I know not all of us on the panel shame the love I have for Anthony Hartigan, but he's, he's, it's not a pl he's not a player that suits the low block. George, George Marsh is... is yeah. Oh, he's, he's, been so superior, yeah. he's been our signing of the season, All without sense. a doubt, 100%. Oh, yeah. I argue Luke McCormick before his signing of the season, but George Marsh for me, because he started late, I think a lot of, a lot of people slated him as well when he first started, I saw a lot of comments saying that he wasn't suited to this team, um, but I, I think first first six games, I think he was, was a contender for man of the match in all of them oh, yeah. that he played in. So. Oh, but that's the thing, I mean, I saw a, fair, a reasonable amount of him when he was at Spurs, and it was just, he's a very, very good player, and he said, when you're doing this low block, he's perfect in that shape of being that midfielder who's just tidy, wins possession back and plays that ball. And I think when you're looking with him, when you pair him with either Woody or Hartigan, you've got two very different pairings there, but you've got two pairings that serve completely different purposes. And I think he's a complete midfielder for us. Yeah, you look at his range of passes, yeah. the, weight, the weight of his passes is just sublime. He gets players in behind, uh, and plays literally to their feet as they run onto it. And I think that's exactly what we need, especially from midfielders, with, with wingers like, or, or wing backs like Osu, uh, Lawrence, and also moving forward to Asal and uh, Rudoni as well. So I like that. Um, also, Ben Hennigan at the back for me is obviously a, a big plus because I think he's been probably up. It's not hard to be, but our defensive player of the season. I think he's been class. Whatever happens, whatever division this club is playing in next year, are we about to see sort of you know, the emergence of, of Zach Robinson properly into the starting eleven and become a fixture? Well, I, I think sorry, Tom, but I think he's, a, he's an outstanding prospect for us. I mean, we've known about him for a, a long time. When he was in the academy, even when he was like 15, playing in the 18s, he's a very, very good player, and he's somebody who. You don't go and play like you did at Sheffield, like that, and not have a future. So he's got a massive job for us. You know, whatever league we're in next year, I think he's got a role to play. He's someone who's had an experience of senior football. You know, we look at some of the, the players that have come in, and yes, we, you know, brought in Sam Cosgrove, someone with a, a reputation. He, he's played senior football, but when you look at someone like Terry Blard, who's, who's come in having not played yes. anything, it's tough, but with Zach Robinson, he's had loans, or you know, he's had opportunities yeah. to go and play football, and that's a big thing. Yeah, I think getting that game time, especially at a young age, kind of developing, um, is something that's so important. Learning how to play up against the back line. I think going to non-league is something that really help learn your physical aspect of the game, how to hold a defender off, how to break past your man, how to take a man on. Um, because you know, the lower leagues you get, you do see a lot of people get kicked up in the air, and you need to learn to face that, especially in League One, League Two, where we've seen some really yeah. physical battles from back lines and, and defensive midfielders. But yeah, no, I'm really excited for him. But that, yeah, but that's thing. I mean, the loan deals are so important for us, just because they're the reasons of we've talked about before. What's gone wrong this year of getting players on their first loan? Because that first loan, when they go out and they play, and they basically just get used to being playing against six foot five, thirty year old defenders. It's something you don't see in the under 18s. Oh, there we are. Joined now by Marie, but... Uh, <laughs> Hello, nice to see you chaps. But, but I think the loan is that first, those couple of years out is so important for them, and it's something that Lyle, that Zach can do in a good way, and it's something that all of our young players are now getting because of the work Michael Hamilton and Robbo did in the academy. Is Jack Rodoni stronger off the right, or is he stronger down the middle? I personally like him out wide. I think he's got, when, when he's confident, he's got a bit of swagger about him. 
Um, he can take a man on, he, he can leave a man looking silly as well. Um, but the same thing with us, if he plays wide, Asal usually draws two men. So it leaves someone free and really can really cause carnage when he cuts in. Uh, he's got a little bit, he's, it's been a bit of a, a trait this year for him to cut in on, onto and have a striker go and I like that bit of, bit of confidence you've not seen it as of late obviously with the team in my eyes probably kind of dropping a little bit uh, with this run but no uh, I think he's, he's so much easier to play out on the wing hopefully we're going to get the Charlton line up at some point as well it be good to see who's starting uh, for Johnny Jackson on co this evening Anne-Marie Godfrey you're with us hello hello good to see you hello. Hello. Yes. nice of you to join us <laughs> um, that back three though they've got to be disciplined they've got to marshal themselves well tonight I think we're, we're, we're seeing Dan Shocker emerge properly now as, as Wimbledon set half. And, and if this is going to be the way forward, that looks like a, a solid combination. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we were just saying on screen, it's unchanged, is it, it got from yeah. Saturday. Um, that's quite a statement, you know, to, for the second game for the new manager to say, you know, these, these are these, sometimes you see a manager tinkering things in the first few games, trying to find the score and the line if he likes going into second game, huge game tonight. Um, he's obviously seen something he likes them, got a lot of trust and faith in those players and that, that back line. Um, yeah, I don't think it's, it's good, it's the right decision to stick with what we had from Saturday, to be fair. But I think that's the thing, I mean, when you go out to Hillsborough and you do play that, you know, that 5-3-2 low block and you do just say keep it tight and it nearly worked, it came so close to paying off. Whatever your thoughts on the style of playing, very, very nearly worked. So I, I'm, I'm not surprised to see it unchanged because... You know, it's rewarding the players that so nearly got a win at Sheffield, which would have been incredible. Uh, Nick Zanev, Nathan Broom and Ashley Baser out on, on field warming up. There's also someone else who's just smashed the ball. That's that one. Advertising. Yeah, that that one. Smashed the ball against an advertising audience. Good work, mate. Good work. Um, I'm worried what you're expecting tonight. It feels... Uh, it's the cliche to say a win is overdue. It's more than overdue. If this was finance we would have been repossessed by now but you yeah. know it's it feels i said to the chaps it feels like this game has been rearranged and rearranged that something yeah just maybe this could be i think good. that's it we said about it on sunday night and, and yeah. alluded to, to what rudy had said in, in his interview this they know that tonight is just it's more than just you know a tuesday night match this is massive tonight yeah. um the most important thing i think going into it as the as we get closer and closer to kickoff is just managing those nerves uh, because the players do know how massive it is and the fans will get the nerves in as well. We've just got to try and keep it positive, keep that energy up, keep the confidence. Um, but like George said, it, it was so many patches that were really, really good on Saturday. We've just got to bring that through. Um, if we get the win, imagine what that will do for the momentum of the Before conference. I mean, yeah. come 9.30 tonight, this ground could be won. Exactly. Yeah, it's huge. And then you build the momentum that yeah, takes to, to, to some of the other games. It's going to be huge. Uh, we'll be travelling around the leagues in a moment. We'll also hopefully have some team news at some point. Spike is right and furious. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a waiter, <laughs> the way he's right. Uh, we'll have David Conley with us. Lyle Taylor will be joining us after seven as well. A bit of a uh, women's football update as well. But we are, I believe, we are looking across the leagues and uh, and, and some fixtures that are, are imperative, both at the top and the bottom. Automatically, I'm drawn to Wigan taking on Accrington Stanley. Um, what are you guys looking at? I mean, I mean, for me, I'm looking at Morecambe Oxford. Fleetwood. Um, and Fleetwood as well. Fleetwood Lincoln, obviously, the two teams. I think Lincoln are just about safe now, uh, in, in obviously not mathematically, but in comparison to the rest of the teams below them. Um, so hopefully, I mean, you'd like to see Lincoln come out on top there and make, make that gap between them and the bottom four bigger. Um, obviously, the limits in Fleetwood to points and also Morecambe Oxford. Uh, Morecambe, obviously, our direct rivals now for that that second, uh, that last uh, spot in the in the bottom four. Uh, and if Oxford can win, which I can't really see Oxford losing that, they've been a strong side this year, uh, as much as it pains me to admit. Um, but yeah, so I'd like to see an Oxford and hopefully Lincoln win tonight. Yeah, I, I think it's those two games. I mean, you know, Lincoln. We've got to hope they go into this mentality of we're not safe, but we need one more win. Mm. If they go into that mentality against Fleetwood and they get the win, they're safe and Fleetwood are dragged right back in it. The problem we have today is if Fleetwood or Moore can pick up any points, oh, it, the mountain becomes even bigger because then then it's nearly impossible. Can't really see crew doing too much damage. Wickham in action as well. Uh, away at Cambridge, Gareth Ainsworth reckons his side. Uh, are going to be uh, in there for the playoffs. Just very quickly, um, before we take you through the Charlton 11, um, Adabak and Fenwa uh, has announced he's retiring at the end of the season. One last dance is what they called it. And it was quite the emotional day on Saturday at, at Adams Park where he's become a bit of a legend. 
their record goal scorer in the EFL. What memories have you guys got of, of Bayo? Not here, but at Kingsman. Well, I, I think that's the thing. Bayo obviously has played a big part in our history, obviously with that team that with Lyle in it as well. And obviously um, Bully, who's also here tonight, he's not with us, but he's around the ground tonight. And he's, you know, that was a big part of our promotion team and two of those players are retiring this year. And it is moving towards an end of an era. Absolutely, Tom. Yeah, I think obviously the, the playoff finals, except for anyone that yeah. penalty. Um, and yeah, I think he was just such a figure. I think the character that came in, like you remember going to games like at Kings of Melbourne, oh yeah, I met Akin Benway today and it was so much bigger than just another Wimbledon player. Yeah. He brought that kind of um, reputation with him, which was obviously a good reputation. You, you, you never forget it, the, the number of kids who used to wait outside the players' tunnel whenever Bale or Lot were involved. It was usually me in that crowd as well. I was a huge, huge beast fan. I probably kept his BMO clothing range going for, for a little while. Um, I love the guy. I love the. I love watching him at any club he's played at. Um, your question being, what was the thing I remember most about the Kings Meadow? I think it was how far he could pass the ball with his chest. It was ridiculous. I've never seen a player do that. Just smack off him and go thirty yards. He was just brilliant. Technically and I, brilliant. It's, yeah. And that's what really surprised me is that people don't realise quite how good a footballer he is and was. Um, and, and I don't think actually, yeah, he's, he's got the kind of everything that goes with Bayo. I don't think he ever really fully got the credit for quite how good a footballer he is. Let's see, it might be one last dance at Wembley for when coming yeah. up back and then one in May. Let's have a look at the chart 11. Um, I'll read it out to you. McGilvery, Parrington, Dobson, Jayasimi, Forster, Kasky, Stockley, Washington, Lavelle, Adam Matthews, Lee and Claire. So obviously some names we know there in Ben Parrington. Uh, George Dobson's in there as well. Connor Washington, kind of everyone knows. But uh, a strong chart up there for Johnny Jackson who needs wins as well yeah Charlton have surprisingly yeah. underperformed for me, underperformed for me. I, I think that team is quite strong and I thought they'd be challenging for you know bottom of the playoffs if not just in and around that mark um, and the fact they were kind of struggling to perform near the bottom near the bottom of the table obviously not directly in that bottom four uh, surprised me uh, George Dobson as every single Wimbledon fan knows uh, is it was a sensational uh, acquisition for them I think he is a, a top league one midfielder, if not a, a bottom kind of half yeah. championship midfielder. Uh, and Ben Perrington, who was, who was very good when he was with us, um, will be on loan and yeah. that loan got short. But that's a, I think Dobson, we all, let's be honest, we all wanted him to come back this summer, yeah. so it's disappointing that he went there. But I think it's testament to how strong League One is this year. You've got a chance team with him, Stockley, Washington, and they're in mid table. I think that says just how strong League One is this year, more than any other year, to be honest. Um, Jay Seamy as well, signed from Swindon, uh, yeah. a very, very good young talent, uh, someone who's got a bit, bit of trick about him as well. So. Jaden Stockley seems like the danger man when they play with that, they don't really look quite together. But him in that 11, and, and, and they look dangerous, especially with Connor Washington, like one of their experienced players. My heart sank a little bit when you read out the lineup. I'm not gonna Sorry. lie. Uh, yeah, Chichester. <laughs> um, it's a very strong lineup. Let's, you know, there's the, when we knew that, um, you know, there's a reason they are where they are in the table and where we are in the table. Um, we've got a couple of players in there we're familiar with. Is there a way we can, you know, do we know their weaknesses and what, what can work well against them? Um, but as the cliche goes, we just have to focus on us and do what we can do and not worry too much about what, what they're doing. We've just got to try and control the game and remember it's a home game and get that advantage behind us. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's take another look through maybe a League One table, especially down the bottom. There's so much to play for here for Wimbledon. Obviously, it, it's tough, but uh, in fact, it's tough as Spike as well. Poor guy, I'm, I'm making him work tonight. <laughs> I apologise, but there you go. There's the League One table. See Gillingham above the dotted line and what a job that Neil Harris has done I mean I know you know the position we're in we're, we're, we're all sat here fretting about it but got to look at what they've done over there and, and Neil Harris despite playing a certain brand of football he's gone and he, he's got them out of the mire. I think when he was um, appointed manager I think a lot of you know, Wimbledon fans probably well, everyone at the bottom four heads dropped a little bit more because he, he's a championship quality manager he can do things with a team and that's proven now um, he's kind of shown that he's got to them out of you know, we were sat on here saying a few weeks ago that Gillingham were relegated and, and now they're out, out of the, the bottom four and could push on now um, for safety. But obviously, it keeps Fleetwood uh, involved in the, in the drop. But yeah, Gillingham have really kicked on. Um, obviously, they've played more games, but as, we, as we've as we known all season, if you've got games in hand, you do have to get points from them uh, for them to matter. Sort of staggering amount of draws that Wimbledon on the back compared to everyone else. Accrington, don't forget, they were in amongst it a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, in fact, well, a few weeks ago, slash a couple of months ago. but. They've pulled themselves out of trouble completely. 
Cheltenham as well. Cheltenham as well. John, John Coleman's the table, done yeah. a, a fantastic job. And that game, actually, I don't know if anyone caught Cheltenham back into last week, but what a game it was. Goals are plenty, and um, uh, the Cheltenham manager, Michael Duff, wasn't quite pleased with how, uh, how his side played, but they're sitting comfortably. But a win tonight, guys, it doesn't quite take one down the drop zone, but what an opportunity it is going into the final three games this season. Oh, oh yeah, 100%. I think we do need, you know, we, I said on another show in the week that you know we need four points from the next two home games. I still think we do that. You look at the games elsewhere tonight, and if Morecambe or Fleetwood pick up points and we drop points, we're in a bit of trouble. So, yeah, I think we certainly need something from this game tonight. Brilliant stuff. Guys, let's talk uh, the ladies' team. George, I'm sure you can fill us in on, on, on the goings-on. All I know is that the atmosphere, the vibe around them right now is unreal. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, now we're, we're on a great run. We're unbeaten in the league since the end of August, so they're on a really good run of form. You know, on Sundays, you were seeing now, we were away at Cambridge United, um, ran out 3 0 victors in the end, thanks to, you know, a penalty we won here. And, you know, it was, a, it was a great game. The women's team were doing really well. We're starting really strongly. And then we've got uh, two more home games to play this year. One of them's going to be here, you know, most likely on Wednesday. We're doing really well. We've got a cup final still to come. The atmosphere is going really strongly as well. Um, and that's just one of those things that we should be really proud of as a club. That we've got a women's team that's actually playing here, scoring goals, playing well. Ashley Hinks, you know, 37 goals. You know, it's an absolutely incredible achievement for her so far. Um, Yes, absolutely incredible moment for the women's team. Absolutely. I mean, what's, what's sort of on the horizon in terms of fixtures, what we're looking at? Because, again, they're getting a good reception when they come. And yeah, no, no, we're getting really good attendances down here. We've got, uh, we're probably going to be here. The next game here is likely to be on Wednesday night against Harlow, but we're just waiting final confirmation on that. We've got, a cup, we've got another game. We've got the cup final, obviously, on the 24th, which is being played at Solihull Moors. And it'll be great to get a, you know, a good turnout for that amongst the Wimbledon fans. It's an 11 a.m. kickoff, sadly which for a cup final was absolute madness, but hopefully we'll have a good numbers there and give Nottingham Forest one hell of a game. And then, you know, this game just wrapping up what you're seeing now, Megan Stowe obviously getting the final one, but a shout out to Steph Mann getting her first goal of the season. Yeah, brilliant stuff, George, thanks for that. I think we we'll have back hammer here. I don't know, are we bringing both guests on one time? Yeah, you know what, let's do it. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Okay, a bit of a re reshuffle here. We're having a reshuffle, we're having a reshuffle, but we're back. There you go. Uh, welcome back. And if you just join us, uh, thank you for taking the time out. Nine Years TV at the Cherry Red Record Stadium ahead of a big, big game uh, in League One this evening. And we've got some big name guests as well. Um, goals, that's what I'm saying between you two. Two spells, just the one. Just the one. Hopefully, for now. two for now. in the future. For now. Hopefully, two in the future. Lyle Taylor, welcome to Plough Lane. Thank you. Welcome to Plough Lane. David Connolly, welcome to Plough Lane. Thank you. Nice Thank you. It's good to see you. It's good you to, I haven't said hello today, but you know, I was said hello to you. It is what it is. Um, firstly, your impressions of, of this stadium? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been here before, so um, it's beautiful. Very impressive. I've driven past it a lot. Normally I'm working, so um, I haven't been here. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great. It's finally come together. Very different to that place in South Nord, isn't it? Yes. Um, Played at the old plough lane when I was younger, um, and obviously, um, you know, look, it's great. You know, see everyone having food and meals beforehand, and you know, it's uh, it's terrific. Lyle, which end do you reckon you're going to be scoring in? Both, hopefully. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, um, am I getting a deal? Mate, no, don't uh, talk to me. It's, it's my first my time favorite. here as well. You and uh, do you know what? It's nice to see what we, and that's everyone, the fans, all of the players that have uh, past and present and, and played one or a hundred or however many games, it's, it's nice to see what we've achieved as a, a group of people and as a community um, come together in, I suppose, plastic and grass and, and it's a beautiful thing to finally see because it was a long time spent away from home for this football club and uh, this is it's something. It's good to have you here. It's really good to have you here. I mean, we saw you tear things up, Kings. Yeah, having you here on on pitch in in that jersey could well, it's just a dream, isn't it, Amory? It's just crazy. I I can't believe it's it's supposed to be your first time being here tonight, and I suppose it's one of the finishing touches, really, as a bit of a fangirl. I love that you didn't introduce <laughs> me as having scored any goals for Wimbledon. I did make an appearance to the ladies at yes. a substitute um, once. Had a go. Yeah, yeah. Believe. <laughs> we'll 
Let's not talk about it. Let's, let's not talk about it. <laughs> David, let's talk about your time here. You joined Wilmington Football Club in, in a really difficult position at the start of the 2000s. But, you know, the goals you scored for the club, what a record. Yeah, I mean, it, it was... Uh, um, it came about actually from, from a teammate of mine for Ireland, um, Kenny Cunningham really, was, he brokered the deal. You know? I'd agreed to stay in Holland and um, he happened to call me on the way to basically go to sign over there. And um, they just sold Jason Yule um, for a lot of money to, to Charlton, ironically. And um, they needed a centre forward and I said, well, I've just agreed, in, uh, just agreed a new deal over here. Have you signed it? No, I haven't signed it. He said, well, you know, just hold fire, and then um, before you know it, I uh, spoke to Terry, Terry Burton, and um, you know the deal was done. I had two very happy years here. Um, great dressing room, you know, really great lads, terrific teammates, very good team, scored loads of goals. Me and Neil Shipley, great partnership up top, um, and probably would have stayed barring obviously the club, you know, with what happened with the club. So um, two, two really happy seasons. What was it like playing amongst? what was going on in, in the background was it difficult yeah I mean uh, as you go on your career and Lyle will probably you know be, be the same but I've, I ended up at Portsmouth in a similar situation um, you know played for some great clubs and unfortunately what, what can happen with football clubs is, is, is a business as well so it can go well and it can also go badly at times um, and it was a it was a, a really testing period what you knew is though that if you were one of the players that were, were doing well or were had some value, you were going to be sold, and, and, and that was it. And um, um, it, it was a real shame to see what happened to the Dons, but, but obviously, uh, you know, it's taken a long time, as Lyle said. But you know, back now. Um, but those, I look back on those 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 seasons uh, as being probably some of my happiest. You know, were they your best best goal scoring season? I think best season in terms of how we played, because we had a, a, a other club that like Lyle would tell you football was evolved. But at that time, I was in a straight four four two. Big man, little man, you know. And my last goal, I think, here was off uh, Bayo. Big man, little man, you know. And and the likes of Neil Shipley and people like that made things a lot easier for you because I was, you know, really a penalty box player, um, finisher. And, and and after that, it, 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 I didn't really ever play that often up front in a two, that regularly, you know. Just at West Ham, I changed from a to a sort of ten, and and that came out of the box a bit more. And things evolved. Now there's like wider tacklers. But at that time, I was a pure sort of 4 4 2 merchant really. Should we have a look at that goal? That, yeah. Let's do it. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's no, not it. So that's the wrong one. That's not it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coming. It's on route. It's oh, on right. route. That's what we told. Oh, this is the game, yeah. Oh, yeah, what a strike from, from Danny. Danny Bowman. Here tonight? Is he? He's here tonight. Is he not playing? <laughs> no, he's got to hang up his boots at some point. There's steam isn't coming off his boots. What yeah. are you talking about? Oh, there you go. There's the, there's the combo. There's the link. Up. And I mean, I've got to be honest, I was what, 38 here, and you know, I could just about play a little bit. And, and the flick on from Bayo took around the keeper. And, but that, that was kind of me, really. So I did well to last that long. Love will tell you, it gets harder, you know, as you get older. So. Uh, that was pleasing. Nice way to end. Squad number 34? I, I number 34, I think you were I, there. I can't. I, could be. It is number 34 because what? It must have been a few months later. 33 uh, comes in. Yes. It? Literally. 2015, number 33. Um, you arrived after uh, a real fascinating journey. We've talked about this journey because it took you some far flung places to go mm. and play football. But was this the club you felt was home? This became home, yeah. um, and that was why it was so important for me to get back here when I was trying to get out of, um, of Scunny. And that it, it took a, a few toys being thrown out of pram um, and a few conversations to be had with the powers that be. But eventually, we got it done. And uh, yeah, it was it was the the thing that reignited my career was being was being here. I mean, that forward line you played in is mm. probably my favourite forward line. Yourself, Tom Elliott, Bayo, who we will talk about in, in a moment. You had little Adi Aziz off the bench as well. It, it, was I mean, it had everything. 
it had a little bit of everything, uh, and there was plenty of physicality in that in that form. Um, I mean, Ards used to call it pace and power. <laughs> I'm not sure you're allowed to be calling it that anymore. I mean, you probably get cancelled, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was something else. And I mean, I remember chasing plenty of Bayos flick ons from his nitro pad that he had on his, on his head. Honestly, the ball used to go up to him and it hit his ball spot, the whole thing, any part of the ball, ball bit, and it used to just take off. But I remember a loopy ball up to him and you'd think, okay, this isn't really going to go far, and it would just skim off the sweat and 40 yards behind you. You're like, hang on, hey, what's going on there then? But that was what. Well, David Conley knows all about it. Well, he had a great touch as well. Oh, unbrilliant. Yeah, his link up play was, was excellent, yeah. so yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Um, we're going to be looking at the playoff highlights in a minute, but there's a, a game that I remember very clearly at Kings Meadow, uh, one of its famous night games against um, uh, a club that we don't really talk much about on this channel uh, in general. But Lyle, what a game! This has got to be up there with your favourites. Yeah, I mean the atmosphere, the place was bouncing that night, and uh, I mean Reeves he didn't score many goals. Yeah. I, I seem to remember that one. And, one against York uh, the year before, but he didn't score many goals. But he, he, the ones he did were fairly important. And you know, I mean, Barchi does brilliantly there at the back post to, to knock that back in. And do you know what? I don't really remember any of this. Oh, that's got to be one of your favourite goals. Yeah, goal. but so you know when you're when you're playing football and you're scoring goals, and like you're in the moment and you remember what happened and you can relive it. I do not remember getting that ball from the throw-in. I just remember celebrating. I, I don't remember anything in between. I don't remember. You can normally see it through your own eyes, but I, I can't remember any of it. And it's it's mad, but that whole night was, was just something. special. Yeah. Amory, what a night. I got goosebumps just like watching it, listening to it. it. It was mad. And I think even from a fan's perspective, I know exactly what you mean. I don't remember the goal going in, but I remember you running and what you said and, and, and how we all felt on the night. It felt so therapeutic, I think, that result for a lot of fans. It was a lot of closure. Um, yeah, it was amazing. Someone from the 90s podcast managed to get me a ticket on the chem flow and I just sort of hid a bit and there's a picture of me <laughs> next to a banner. <laughs> About four years later, someone DM'd me on Twitter and goes, were you the one singing that song, like this certain song? And I was like, no. Uh, and they've popped up and there's a photo of me in the corner I'm like oh yeah maybe it was maybe it was but what a special night I mean Lyle the playoff final Wembley leading up to it you know up until December I remember my first ever game as a, as a broadcaster was Stevenage at home Teddy Sheringham in charge of Stevenage I remember it wasn't a nice place I think we are beaten by a goal to nil and it didn't feel too good but then, December onwards, something changed. Everything changed. We, we, we seemed to just pick up momentum. And in football, momentum is so important. Um, you, you feel like you can win a game and you just roll into the next one and you win again. And you just steamroller everyone. I don't know what the, the, the official figures are, but we can't have lost any more than two or three games after the new year. And, I mean, we made it into the playoffs. I think it was, it was uh, Stevenage away. We were guaranteed to be in the playoffs, finished seventh, um, and it was like, right, now we're going in the playoffs. And but there was no, there was no ego with it. There was no, there was no big headedness. There was no arrogance. It was just, let's go in the playoffs. And it was that simple. There was, there wasn't a single point where we thought we could be backs against the wall here. And I mean, I had the, the way it panned out was unbelievable. With this, with this club, there feels like there are specific milestone moments, even within games that you will remember. You know, you you think I I remember Bayo cracking the post when when the ball just drops to and he, you just see a foot come out of nowhere, bang, he, he cracks the post, and you think their goalkeeper, the Accrington goalkeeper, is like he's on a warning, and then you see Keller Roos make that save at the other end, and just the ground go crazy. It it, it was such an incredible night. I think here we go. We're watching the highlights now. What a night it was! Here you go. I remember. I remember before the game, and even during the game, it, it felt really strange. I didn't feel fantastic. Um, I'd had a I'd had a really bad 
week or two weeks. Um, and do you know what? It, so it sounds ridiculous, but the reason I'd had such a bad two weeks was it, it stemmed from um, the player awards, end of season awards. And uh, I didn't win anything. Obviously, I was top scorer that season, but I didn't win anything. And there came a point where I sat there and I, I thought, do you know what? I feel really underappreciated here. For everything we've achieved as a team, and for everything I've achieved personally, I feel really underappreciated. And I remember there was a conversation between me and the manager, and it was about 45 minutes long. And there was a good few things to get off my chest and a good few things that he got off of his chest. And uh, yeah, it kind of culminated in the, the, the performance we got in the second leg of this. I mean, really bad start. I don't know what Riggy's thinking there. Um, the penalty, brilliant. Uh, he was a, a cocky little... Uh, Josh Windows. So and so. But Shades of his dad, baby. Yeah. And then this had a strike. Yeah, I mean, well. It's by far my all-time favourite one of the game. Yeah. Without a doubt. I've still got my one. Do you like that kit, by the way? Yeah, loved yeah. it. I've still got mine at home. Okay. I've got some really random kits that people would look at and go, that's <laughs> horrible. And <laughs> I've, got, I've got all of the random ones. Why is Bayer just push Bocci away? <laughs> pushes everyone away. That's just what B does. But no one else scores that goal. I mean, this is what we call a real pain in But then he just gets on it every time. Yeah. Every single time he was there. He was so Aziz. effective. So effective. And I mean, didn't we have the the lights went out? Someone pulled yeah. the plug on the yeah. on the generator or something like that. It was just a mad, mad night. And I mean, I still got the pictures of celebrating on the on the pitch with the fans. It was just crazy, and all the torches going on. And great rugby tackle from Rigi. That, that has got to be the most underrated piece of play anyone's ever uh, pulled off without getting that. Taking a shot of the rebound, David, jump in on this. Take, taking a shot in of a rebound must be harder than taking a shot more cleanly because you've got to time it perfectly. Yeah, I mean, there the ball's obviously coming back to, coming across. Yeah, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, but I tell you what, if you ask most of the forwards who've got a one touch finish into nearly an empty net, you'd take it all day long. 100%. And you don't, you don't, it's not something you think about. No. It's instinctive. At that point, you're not thinking, oh, there's the goal, there's the ball, let me do this, let me do that. It's just clean contact on target that's all you think about and, and this day this day really was something um, we turned tell up. us about that goal by the way. I, I don't know you, you just kind of find yourself somewhere in the box and the ball drops to you it was a re I mean Cal will tell you it was a really bad cross that turns into a really good cross because you know, someone gets on the end of the sticks in the bottom corner this definitely isn't a penalty <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> no, nobody could sit there with a straight face right. and say that's a penalty. T tell us what happens in this one when, when Bayo grabs the ball as well. Oh, it, it kicked off big time. Um, Callum wanted to take the penalty. I was designated penalty taker. Right. Um, Callum wanted to take the penalty because his dad had passed. Um, Bayo wanted to take the penalty because he thought he'd be the next in line. Addy wanted to take the penalty because he'd won it. The, the only way it would have been solved is if I'd have been on the pitch and I'd have said, no, I'm taking it. But, I mean, it... it there was a there was a little bit said about it in the in the aftermath and it kind of put a, a bit of a bad tint on everything but ultimately that's forgotten because all we remember is the success of the day what was the day like in general from start to finish well we turned up in our tracksuits looking like ragass rovers we actually looked like ragass rovers it tracksuits we've worn all year like bobbly covered in stains <laughs> like we looked like crap and they all turned up they all had the same suits on, the same shirt, same tie, same sh uh, shoes. And I remember there was a, a little a little winger who had played for Wimbledon before, and he was at Plymouth, I can't remember what his name was, and he was giving it stacks. He was giving it stacks. He was going, yeah, we're gonna smash you lot. Look at us, we're, we're gonna walk all over you. And we were all just sat there like, all right, I suppose we'll see. And it was just a quiet confidence from us. And as soon as that game started, there was no way we were ever losing. What did Neil say pre game? Probably something like kick it in the goal really hard. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have been in your zone, like bang, we're focused, like you just sat there literally in your zone. You, no. You can't hear things around you. No, I was never really in a zone. No? No, what I used doing? to put my own music on, play games on my phone. And just, I still do it now. 
And I mean, at Birmingham now, if you use your phone after a certain time in a dressing room, it's a fine. But I sit there, I've said, no, 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 it's not a fine. I sit there and play puzzle games. That's what I do. I listen to music and play puzzle games. David Connolly, you must have played Snake in your no. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't play much on my phone now because it's, it's about that big. Yeah. The old lemon Nokia yeah, lemon. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Pre match for you, though, I mean, it must have been a different atmosphere back then. It wasn't that long ago. Um, <laughs> this club's I mean, moved, uh, I mean, yeah. things have changed yeah. here. I mean, when, when I came back to AFC, you know, the, the, at the time, Neil needed, you know, needed some firepower, etc. So everyone, you know, the first time I was a little bit different, second time around, you know, I think he just wanted people he knew, he trusted, and I think Neil was very much like that as a manager. You know, like simple messages maybe, but everyone had to know their jobs. Yeah. Everyone had to do their jobs, and I think he liked people that he could be honest with. You know, and um, you know, when things change in a cup final, that's when things can go wrong. You know, I reached the cup final, reached a playoff final, championship with West Ham, and we changed things for that final. And, and really, we probably shouldn't have done. You know, last saying they went in track suits. To me, I think that's Neil probably just wanted to keep everything the same and just focus on your game. And you know, and I, and I think um, I think that's sensible. I think Neil did really well as, as a manager here. Yeah, you know, he did he did really really well. And uh, um, he was a big part of me coming back the second time around. I probably wouldn't have come back, but former teammate and and he was a manager. What celebrations like? Uh, I I remember being blinded by champagne. Uh, honestly, I, I don't really remember that much of it. it it's it's mad. You, you you don't you remember the success and you remember how you felt, but you don't remember the individual moments. And then all the boys went off to Vegas, so yeah, I missed out. That Darius did his Wolf of Wall Street impression. Yes, he did. Well, we came back to the stadium, didn't we? Of course, and, yeah. Uh, Ivan, yeah. Um, Danny DeVito in his um, <laughs> prime. Decided. Did you hear me say that on fighting talk, by the way? No, did it not I, go I, down? I was, well, no, it went down really well. I won a point on, on BBC's <laughs> fighting talk the other week. They were asked what film, sporting film, needs to be made. I said, look, John Green should make sort of the greatest story ever told in football, the movie, and Danny DeVito has to play. Ivor Heller, it has to be. It has to. You know, or has Buller. He's a bit tall for has Buller. Well, he is, he is. Yeah. No, Hasbulla's a bit tall for him. Well... You said that. Not <laughs> <laughs> Has bullets over there somewhere as well? Have you seen the photo? If you want to have a photo, then we can sort that out. He's got a woman charm. He's got a woman oh, charm. Yeah, yes. um, he is a lucky charm this evening. Hopefully, uh, if there is a win, then he will be travelling with the team everywhere. Yeah. I'll, I'll get Trev to go off to him. Um, David, when you played in that first step with Wimbledon, the academy was really strong. You know, you used to think of some of the names that were there. Joe McEnough was there. Curtis yeah. Davis was there. Yeah. And you see it tonight again. The academy players on the pitch, this club's reputation with, with pulling the best talent, it, it's still got it. Absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, my son was in the academy here, terrific setup, you know, um, uh, great coaches. And, and uh, look, coaching across the board is kind of standardised now, right? You, you, you know, you could be working at, at Chelsea or Wimbledon, it doesn't mean you're necessarily a better coach, whatever it may be. In fact, you know, sometimes you, you need to be a better coach, you know, if you're a little bit lower down. And um, uh, look, I've seen players at Wimbledon are produced and at 15, 16, 17, a bigger club comes in and, and, and takes them. But nonetheless, you know, if you will, you know, you're going to get 100 games under your belt or Anthony, you're going to get 100 games under your belt. And, and you can't kind of buy that, you know, and it's hard to keep going on loan if you're a youngster. I know we've had some loans this season here and previous years. Loans have been good, right? And you need loans if you're a club like Ashley Wimbledon. You need some good loan players. Um, but if you want to make a breakthrough and play, then you know you can't go too far wrong because you know I know the people in the academy are they're, they're really good. And obviously Mark's no longer the manager, but he was fantastic, wasn't he? For the club, Jeremy Sawyer as well. You know, so um, yeah, even from my time 20 years ago to now, um, yeah, the academy is really important. Uh, messaging from Matthew Arwood. Can we start a bond to bring Lars Ayla Baby back? Lars. Yes. Yes, there yes, you go. Plough Lane Bond 774 <laughs> is launched. Uh, it's called Bring Lyle Home. So that's what we're doing. What people don't realise and what Lars doesn't realise is he's going to be locked in a cupboard here this evening uh, with his forms terminated with Nottingham Forest. And just let's sign in, you know. I can't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. We got it. I have got a question though. Someone called Danny DeVito, get the rope out. <laughs> yeah. I have got a question. Yes. 
David, when I was here, the dressing room was obviously massive and, and Arge used to tell stories about the things that went on beforehand. But obviously he told those stories as the manager. So it's mm. whether whether there was redacted bits or, or what, yeah. it's it's yeah. interesting. But but to me, having grown up watching football and then having joined football in the transition between it being very molly coddled and PC now to what it was when I was a first year pro at Millwall. Yeah. What was that dressing room like? Yeah, it was it was as um, Neil was kind of I guess probably probably just scratched the surface a little bit, but you know, that is what it was like and um, often the strength of the dressing room or how good that dressing room is or the characters that are in it, you know, uh, a lot of that comes out on the pitch, right? If you're the underdog and often Wimbledon have been the underdog. And it's normally a strength of that dressing room players, the character of fire for each other, you know, honesty with each other, everyone doing their jobs. It was a very honest dressing room, demand a lot of everyone. And it just been relegated from the Premier League. Top players, I mean Michael Thomas was in there, I mean yeah the list is endless, like top, top really good football players. Um, probably didn't make the most of it actually at that time. Should have really given it more of a of opportunity to go straight back up, but we but we didn't. Um, but uh, no, the dressing room is so important. And you know, obviously tonight, right, they're up against the Charlton side, they're a good team. That is a really good team. The front two are going to be a real handful for Wimbledon today. And it's about sticking together. If someone makes a mistake, you can't be crumbling now. I've heard that, that Mark has sort of not allowed the media at the training ground, if that's true. He's trying to create maybe a siege mentality, which is important. Everyone stick together, us against the world. And, and um, but the dressing rooms, as, as you will know, uh, 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 I mean, I've been in a good, a few good ones. Like Southampton was an outstanding dressing room, and we started in League One. You know, I was at the um, trophy final the other the other night, Papa John's, and we won that with Southampton. But all those lads ended up, you know, in the Premier League or winning Schneidlin. the Premier League or winning yeah. the European Cup. But you know, what? they were good lads in League One, and they're still good lads in. Um, in, the, in the Premier League in the top. Kelvin Davidson next to wouldn't he? Yeah, exactly, yeah, Kelvin was, I was here with Kelvin and, you know, so the dressing rooms are important, Sunderland, you know, you look back in your career, not only where you did well, but normally where you did well, or where you enjoyed, you normally had a good dressing yeah. room as well. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, I'm, I'm just really interested in that time. You know, I know everyone's going to ask about that time because a lot of those records between 2001 to 2003, 2000 to 2002, they it's very hard to find concrete people talking about it and, and because it was a very hurtful time for a lot of people around there but for you, you you signed for a club that was effectively on the way down but you propelled them up it feels yeah I mean at that, I think that time I'd whatever the goals were you know and in the end I didn't achieve anything whereas if I was at Sunderland or another club I was top scorer but we won the league we won the championship but the team was greater than the sort of, it wasn't just about getting goals, you know, whereas at, uh, at Wimbledon at the time, I got more goals per game than anyone. I was like a Mitrovic then. I got 24 league goals in 28 games in the championship. That was a lot. That was a lot. You know, uh, nearly nearly a goal a game. It was most in the country. But at that time, I relied, Lyle was here with his service, you know, good teammates. Neil Arley whipping it in field? Yeah, Neil, um, Neil Shipley, you know. Uh, yeah, Kenny Cunningham, yeah, we had a great, we had a really good team. You know, we had a good team uh, set up around the front two, um, but ultimately didn't really get team success, you know, which is a shame. But uh, happy days, very happy days. We are 17 or so away, a minute away from kickoff here at Plowland. Is it warm enough, Mercy Mark? It is. I mean, what do you reckon of it? Lights on now? Looking good? Yeah, I want to get a game. <laughs> I haven't got any boots. Get the rope out. I've got Someone. no boots and I'd have to cut my hair off. Who could I be? For the <laughs> mm. we'll, we'll still use some boots. I think Zach bro. looks like Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> so hope you don't play like Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a dump button anywhere? That's the question. Anyone I'm not too button? sure we can talk about it. No, no, no he's, he's, he's entangled in certain things. Yes. As long as it's not Jada Pinkett Smith, then you're all good. You won't get punished for that. Last time, everyone. Uh, <laughs> what we expected tonight? It's it's kind of make or break now. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, what's there? Seven games left. Um, it's really difficult to, for me because obviously, Jacko Johnny Jackson was my assistant manager when I was at Charlton, and I still 
know a good few of the boys, so it's really difficult for me because I want them to have success, but ultimately I don't want them to have success at the cost of Wimbledon being out of League One, so I'm blue and yellow tonight. Well, I mean, the, the reception that you got from, from Wimbledon fans has been incredible. They, they love you. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had a Charlton fan when, when we were sat together who um, tweeted something that won with Carsten Yanka. Yes. Um, yeah. But, you know, here we go. Uh, yeah, they're, oh, they're, this is the game from earlier this season at the Valley. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. 2016. 2016. Why are you playing this? Yeah, we, we won this. Dom, Dom scored. Yeah, Dom scored. Dominic Polian scored a goal. Well, you'll see it in a sec. But how we scored this goal, I uh, will never know. I uh, 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 will never know because Dom was one of them. He'd be anonymous for 85 minutes and then he'd do this. And it was like, well, where's that just come from? Mental. Toe pump. Like that. <laughs> but that was Dom. A talented, talented boy. And I mean, it's a shame he didn't make a bit more of his career, but I think he kind of fell down the rung to and there you go, the forgotten man Tyrone Barnett yeah. I don't know where he is now he's playing for my local, local team Eastleigh is he? Yeah. 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 Good. he's had a good career very good here we go another throwback game this time from 2017 uh, Tom Elliott with a red card a golden red card yeah didn't he get sent off for a celebration yes uh, yeah what's your favourite celebration? Uh, I, I don't know if I have a favourite celebration to be honest. Dave, what was your celebration? <laughs> I, again, I didn't really, I, wouldn't, I didn't have a trademark one, I think. I was just delighted when I did score. <coughs> there, there is no feeling like the ball going in the back of your net off of a part of you and your body. What a finish that is from Tom Elliott. What a finish that is. Yeah, didn't he get booked for going in the crowd? And he yeah. got pulled in by whoever that is there. The so yeah. whoever that bloke is there in the hat, <laughs> someone needs to find him. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> some, some happy fans. Happy fans there. <laughs> there you go. Here comes uh, another. Harry Forrester. Wow. Oh, there he is. Someone's just been taken out there. Listen. Do you know what? Bo was in charge at this point. Um, Carl Robinson had left and sacked. I don't know what it was, but um, Bo was actually in charge of Charlton. And this is the game that he decided he, that I was potentially a good signing for him. Uh, Pat fell over. Cheers, Pat. Thanks, mate. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Amos got nothing. It's great. I mean, brilliant. And then the, the, the year after, I'm, I'm sat there saying, cheers, Pat. Thanks for the contract. So, but this was a hell of a result. I mean, Charlton at this point were building towards making the playoffs. I think they made the playoffs, um, got beat by Shrewsbury. And uh, yeah, had 10 games, I think that was the only one that Bo lost. And this is uh, from last season, finishing in a 2 2 draw. Pitch looks good there, doesn't it? <laughs> Did it have no rugby on it at that point? <laughs> oh, is that a sore spot? <laughs> oh, sorry. We love rugby. <laughs> what kind of rugby do you want? Uh, I don't know, the egg chasing bit. <laughs> there you go, good finish there. Solid. See the difference there in that goal, though, that it makes having someone like a Joe Pigger as a focal point. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, it makes such a difference. You bring people into the game, and look, we don't play little and large anymore, or very rarely do you see that played. But having somebody who can play at the top end of the pitch and just get hold of the ball is what every half decent team is built on in, in today's game. I mean, what? What do you prefer? Do you prefer playing in two? Do you prefer playing with three behind you in a four-two-three-one? What was your preference? Uh, I prefer to play in a two, but there's not very many teams that play a two anymore. Um, oh dear! <laughs> Brian Longman's uh, capitalising. What a way to get your second! Absolutely. Absolutely. That was. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I prefer to play in a two, but I think the, the modern football is going very much the way of a striker. I right? can blame Drogba for that. Drogba came into the Premier League and decided that he could do what two people could do all on his own, and that kind of ruined football for us who weren't strong and huge like his. Yeah, 
they two for you all the time as well. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, and I, I can I can see it all sides. The only thing is, I think if you're playing with a so-called ten or in a different way, that ten has got to justify playing. You know, the, the ten has got to be able to do a little bit of everything. Otherwise, don't play with a ten. Um, likewise, if you haven't got two good strikers, don't play two good strikers. You know, so it's kind of managing what you've got and. Um, you know, I was spoken about the focal point. The focal point is, is, is crucial, and as we've seen, say, Joe going, even with all those goals, you know, AFC just about stayed up anyway. Losing those goals, losing Ollie, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of good players and goals that have gone out the door on a focal point, which, which helps you get up the pitch. I mean, um, and if you're not going to be a big man, that means you, you're basically getting the ball on the floor, and if you're not, and, and that's a, a, that's a and Mark Robinson started playing, right? So, you know, which, which um, some sides like to play against because they'll just sit in and then try and hit you on the, on the break. So it's a, it's a real fine balance. We've, that's why it's so hard being a manager, right? So hard because it's their job to, to work out the best system and put those players in the right positions and it's difficult. How long do you think it would take a manager to bring yeah, in that Yeah, good system? question. Great question. I mean, he sort of... I mean, say Marx has played a back four, back three, two up front, one up front, and you know we saw it the weekend. He's kind of gone three five two. I don't know, is it three four three today? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to. It's three two wide and, and one down through the middle. Um, but I think you can achieve an awful lot very quickly on a training ground. You can. You can. The new manager bounce is a real thing. Yeah, you can. You can. You, you can really implement stuff. Um, as long as the boys are receptive to it, right? I mean, you'll know. 100%, I mean, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. New manager, but I mean, look at Nottingham Forest this year. Bottom of yeah, the league. Yeah. New manager comes in, and I think on the form guide, they're second only to Fulham since mm. that day. So mm. that just says it all. And if you've got a group of players who have got something to fight for, a point to prove, and a reason to be out there running themselves into the ground, you're halfway there. Warming up nicely inside the Cherry Road Record Stadium. We're about nine minutes away from kickoff. Here, it's a big London derby, a South London derby between Wimbledon and Charlton. A massive, massive game for the Dons this evening. I think we can get the can we get the lineup back up, the uh, the Wimbledon lineup back up, just to have one sort of last look at it. David, it's about having that solid three that are, are disciplined tonight because when you've got Jaden Stockley, yeah. while you know all about them, Jaden Stockley, Connor Washington, you know what they can do. That back three is crucial. Hundred percent. There's going to be. There's going to be all sorts of bombardment from from there. There'll be aerial bombardment into Jaden, uh, Jaden, uh, and there will be Connor Washington will run off the back of you all day long. So they're going to have to be right at it, and a lot of talking going on to make sure that somebody's tracking runners and, and one up and two round kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, not only the three. You, I think. In all this, you know, um, it's not only goals. We're talking about goals here, right? But if you go back to a couple of years, it was kind of Aaron Ramsdale that kept AFC in the league, really. So I think, I think not just the back three, but I think goals really important. Yeah. Amory is 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 big. I I I just want to get out of there. I, yeah. I I'm wishing the time to, to go away. Um, I just want to get out of there. I'm buzzing. I'm I'm really buzzing. I've been thinking about this game for a while now, and it just feels like this is. This is going to be a pivotal, pivotal moment. Uh, I can't see. Ooh, is it warped? Uh, is that a fake name? I don't want to be like AFTV. Warm. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> warm Which current AFC Wimbledon player would you most like to play with? Lyle? Um, I'd say it'd probably be IU. I've heard a lot about him and I've seen him play a couple of times. Uh, I was obviously at the concrete roundabout for that game. Um, and I'd be interested to see close up how good he is um, because from what I can see he's got all of the tools so it'd be, it'd be interesting fact finding mission for me Dave? Yeah I think it's sound as well you know whenever I've seen him he's looked really good I think he could have scored more goals but I think he will score more goals I think he'll get better he's only young he's just a kid he's just a baby starting out so uh, I think I like, I, both, I like both him and Ridoni I think that you know if I say you're going to stay up <laughs> they're going to have to get some goals those two Amory? Who would you play with? Who would I play with? Or Sue, because he runs so much I wouldn't have to do any of the running. Nice. So just pass it nice. Yeah. Well played. Um, look at those. Oh, there you go. Mike Hasty. Is that Mike? It is Mike. So, camera's <laughs> away. 
you know, uh, decision made house on the market for Plano Bond 700. Is it 700 or 770 something? I can't remember what it was. Don't tell the wife. No worries, we won't. You can come and kick around mine. Don't worry about it. We're keeping him. We're keeping him. I promise we are. Um, yeah, just just looking again at, at that Wimbledon team. We're looking for a lot of creativity from the fullbacks. Osu, Lawrence, we need something from them tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I just wonder though. I think Charlton are gonna are gonna be a real threat at their front two. Often the three, you look at it like that, and it will very rarely be that three. It will probably be a back five. You know, it's just how how much Charlton can force the two wing backs back really to to outside and make it a five. That means, you know, Woodyard, the two in the middle of the park, gonna have an awful lot of work to do. And you know, Onus and Redoni and us out help out, but also be a threat going their way. So it, it'll be interesting how it starts. The one thing you can't do here is let your centre forward be isolated. If you do that, you you never win in the game. You got no chance. Five minutes to kick off here at the Cherry Red Records Stadium. I, I don't really want to ask for predictions. Um, I really don't want to ask for predictions. <laughs> anyone, and anyone. Just a win of some sort Thank you. would be nice. Thank you. I couldn't care if it goes in off someone's backside. Just a win. I mean, I, I, off your own. Well, yeah, I, I think that might be a throw or a goal kick or something. But just it, anything to keep this team in this league. Uh, yeah. However, it happens, this team needs to stay in this league. Because the so. next game's tough. I mean, the next game doesn't get any tougher. Yeah. And that's an emotional one as well. Yeah, that's it, not it, just it, a it, tough it, game. It's yeah. an emotional game. Yeah. yeah. Dave, for you tonight. Yeah, I hope. Uh, yeah, as Lyle says, just anything. Um, because I think after the MK Dons game, the rest of Bar and Wickham, I think, are winnable. So something here, we, I think you know anything here would be good, but certainly victory. Because I think Morecambe are home, I think Fleetwood at home tonight. I think I could yeah, be wrong. So so there's teams in and around that could pick up points. Yeah, Amory. Uh, same as though, just somehow, anyway, win, uh, and I think just get that momentum back, get that confidence back. Oh, I'm going for a 6 0 uh, to Wimbledon. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, don't think, thank you. <laughs> you know, me, B, and Tom aren't playing, right? <laughs> You've got to have some hope. You've got to have some hope. There's something about this ground that on an, at night, there's something about just football under the lights. This kind of time of year, early to mid spring, there's the smell of grease in the air. What more do you want? Grease and George Jones in the air. <laughs> and, uh, probably George's hair. That's what it is. Uh, we'll get a sponsorship next year, like Tresemme or something like that. Um, George, if this club stays up, I'm giving you a haircut. Yeah, everyone's sure. We're giving you He's a strip. He's nodding. We've got an agreement. You ain't cutting my hair. Don't even say my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't say my hair. Why don't we cut? Cut your hair. We can keep your hair. We'll be okay, that's right. Someone cut his jeans. <laughs> Someone cut his jeans. Yeah. They were trying to cut my hair. <laughs> holding on to you. We need someone to just hold on to you. But um, the atmosphere tonight, as the players come out, is electric. A big, big, uh, big bit of noise from, from the middle of the main stand here. And both teams are out at the Cherry Red Record Stadium. That's it from us. Catch you after the game. Come on, you dons. Enjoy the game.